Every parent has stayed up all night with a sick child. Most of the time, the illness passes and everything's back to normal in the morning. But there are serious conditions that require medical attention. My guest today is Dr. John German, a pediatric surgeon at Children's Hospital of Orange County and chairman of the board of directors at the Ronald McDonald House. John, thanks for coming. Thank you very much for having me, Larry. It's a pleasure. You may not remember, but about 20 years ago, you operated on one of my kids, and everything went great, so I appreciate that. And we're going to talk about some of the uh, lumps and bumps that children have. And I think you brought a uh, poster here that kind of divides it up into the common lumps and bumps. Of course, for a parent, every bump is a potential tragedy, of course. And that's why it's good to see which ones are serious and which ones are not. So how would you divide these up, I guess, starting from head to toe? Yes, that's a good way to do it. Uh, there's always a these uh, children are born with these cysts, particularly of the eyebrow and of the scalp. Uh, the significance of these uh, is that they can erode the bone underneath mm -hmm. and actually uh, get through the bone. So you should take those out within the first year or two of life. The presternal cyst is very similar to this. Presternal meaning like meaning in the front just of the chest? Right here right at the collarbone. Okay. And uh, that gets infected. And so a lot of times we don't see them until they've had their infection and then it becomes a little bit more problematic to deal with. So we like to see them before that and they present just as a little pit. It's a little tiny pit right there at the clavicle. And the cysts on the scalp though, are they more of a spongy little yeah, uh, actually, elevation like? Actually they're a lump, it's sometimes hard. Sometimes you can't tell, yeah. The, um, other things very common in our office because we see a lot of uh, children going through puberty, particularly boys, will get some breast development and it'll be a little flat disc of hard tissue under the nipple and it'll be tender. And uh, if we have a little breast development with that, that of course increases the concern for the child and anxiety. So we see that very commonly. We usually watch them because most of them, 90% of them go away. And then by the time, the two years passes past puberty and they still have them, then we recommend uh, taking them out. The, uh, particularly if you're a young wrestler or uh, somebody is, not, is appearing without your t-shirt, uh, uh, it becomes uh, significant for some kids, cause a lot of anxiety. Hernias, such as epigastric hernias, which is located above the umbilicus and umbilical hernia, as well as an inguinal hernia, the common hernias we see every day. So the, um, the umbilicus is the belly button? Right, okay. right at your belly button. It didn't close. Okay. Oh, so the belly button pouch. didn't close. So and, and the epigastric means right under the breastbone? No, actually it's between the breastbone and the umbilicus. Okay. And somewhere in between there, it's a hard little knot and it doesn't go away. And um, almost nobody knows what it is. Even the pediatricians a lot of times will refer it as what is this little mass there? And it's an epigastric hernia, it's not, and it's fairly common. And it's a surgical condition as well. So that should be operated on usually? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Now, usually when we see these, a the child will also have an umbilical hernia or an inguinal hernia, a more common hernia in the groin, which is a boy's as a result from the descent of the testicle. That's, uh, so with inguinal hernia in a boy, the testicle hasn't descended yet? Well, it comes down. It comes down. And that, channel that the hernia, that the testicle comes through, doesn't close. Okay. And if a loop of bowel gets out and stuck in any one of these hernias, then it becomes an emergency. So right. that's the reason we get them repaired. So even if it's not stuck yet, you want to get it repaired before yes, it does get, you don't have to worry about it anymore. Yes, sir. Right. Okay. Now, um, there's a common baker cyst, popliteal cyst, or whatever you want to call it, it occurs behind the knee which is uh, uh, essentially just like a ganglion, which you see ganglions on the wrist. It's a little pooching out of the synovial membrane, which is the lining of the joint. Mm -hmm. And the joint has fluid in it, like jello. And that little uh, cyst has lining of the uh, joint with this jello, the synovial fluid. And that stays, it can get bigger. Uh, we usually watch them for a while because a lot of them will go away or they can be injected with steroids as non-operative management. So what is the problem if you leave it? it does it become painful later on or does it rupture? It or? sometimes can get bigger. It can get bigger. Yeah, it'll grow with the child. Does it ever kind of compress the vein so you can get a clot in your vein no. in that area? No. no. So it's a cosmetic thing but it 
could be painful if it gets yes. bigger? Oh, yes, it can be painful. Yeah. And it bothers them. Yeah. So if they have that, can they still uh, play sports until it's sure, fixed? Sure, sure. Yeah. So it's not really like something that popped out today, they have to see their doctor in the ER that no, night. No, And that brings up a very another important point. When you find uh, whatever these lumps and bumps are, you should see your pediatrician first. Because a lot of times it could be something that's not even uh, one of these things, it's just a simple uh, skin condition. But uh, the important thing is once they see them, then they have to decide whether to refer the patient on and you need to get that referral before you come to a person like myself. So you don't really need to go see a surgeon right away for any of no, these things? No, this is usually you can see your pediatrician, your family practitioner, and uh, if he feels the child needs to be referred on, he'll uh, make the referral and that way you get to be sent to the proper person. John, I know it's important when you take care of a child, you have to take care of the parents and you are very involved with the Ronald McDonald House. As a matter of fact, you're the chairman of the board of the Ronald McDonald House here in Orange County. So I think there's a misconception that this is all funded by the McDonald Corporation. Can you tell me how it works and what it means to you to be part of this Ronald McDonald House? Well, first of all, this is a community resource. And we consider in healthcare a very important community resource in that this is totally supported by the local families, local, uh, our local board, as well as the people mm -hmm. of the county. Uh, we have uh, all of our monies are generated from here. And, uh, and the only way that uh, McDonald's supports us is through grants. The important thing is the purpose or the mission is to provide a haven, a safe place for families to recover from a day's ordeal of having their child in the hospital. And if they get a little break, they can come over the house and rest up, they can get refreshed. Almost every night we have meals that are uh, provided by uh, support groups and ser service groups and uh, companies who have organizations that donate their time and efforts for charities. And uh, it's a, we feel one of the most significant charities we have available to us. And from a medical standpoint, it's extremely important that we have this type of uh, support so that the parents are uh, able to uh, keep uh, themselves together. I like that word, so they can keep it together so they can take care of their children. That's fantastic. So do, do they pay anything or the a nominal something? Very nominal. In fact, I don't think many people p actually pay. And the other thing I should bring up is that the nights that we're full, we still will rent a hotel room for wow. a family. And sometimes we have uh, five or 10 families staying in the local hotels at our expense. So it, it becomes quite a significant uh, part to support, but everybody chips in, everybody uh, realizes this is a, a very important thing to do and, and we're able to do it. And we're very uh, grateful for that. That's fantastic. Well, this has been a great interview. I've learned a lot and I think the parents will learn a lot what to worry about, what lump and bump to worry about. I appreciate you taking care of my kids and all you do for the Ronald McDonald House and the kids in this community. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure.